Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Draw With T. We are finally getting back into some character art, so if you guys have missed me drawing my characters, well, the next few episodes are going to be just that. So, in today's episode, I am drawing the villain of Kalismir, known as Duke Baldric, or King Baldric. He's a big evil guy who was going to be the, the next duke, and uh, he had his eyes on the, the king's crown itself, and... Uh, turn traitor and he was kicked out for that. His power comes from um, this crown he wears, which is a big, big plot point of of Kalismir. Um, I don't want to get into it too much, just because things might change in the uh, in the story going forward. Although I don't think too much is going to change concerning um, Baldric and where his power comes from. But uh, Despite him being the villain, and the villain kind of being an important character in the story, both Kalismir and stories in general, I realize I don't actually draw him all that much. And um, I decided he's probably a good character to draw next after having drawn the characters that I draw quite often. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's an interesting character for me to draw because he is so different from what I normally draw. Um, I usually draw very young people, usually girls, or I'm drawing creatures, kind of like Storm Screech the Hippogriff or Humphrey the Dragon. And Baldric is none of those things. He's not goofy. He's he's not a creature. He's he's not female. Um, you know, he's got a beard. He's older. He's supposed to be kind of scary looking a little bit. So sometimes I don't like drawing him because of that. He's very different, and I, I do have my tropes of what I like to draw. But in this instance, it was actually a, a very nice kind of change of pace. And I once I kind of got over my fear of making him look dumb, uh, I actually had a lot of fun. And you guys are going to see kind of uh, the sort of fun I was having here. Um, so the very first drawing that I'm doing here is basically just revisiting the design that I had of him roughly the last time I drew him and he was basically very gaunt he had a beard um and he wore this sort of scary looking crown and that was basically it you know um and as we go on here you're gonna see some exploration as I keep saying uh one page of drawings is not enough to really design a character but the the my goal here isn't to utterly redesign him that'll come at a later date all I'm trying to do here is kind of update his look, um, try a few new things, and basically just draw something that I will know going forward that this is Baldric. Uh, it might not be his final design, but it's going to be a, a design that, you know, I, I'm not going to confuse him with another character, and it gives me kind of a, an idea of of him as I, as I continue to write the story, because um, this portrait and all the other portraits I've been doing are going to um, basically be used as... Well, if you play D&D &D and you have your, you know, you know you have your little character portrait, that's basically what this is going to be. It's going to be a little character portrait that sits on the front page of Baldrick's uh, character document, because most of my major characters have a document full of, you know, just important details, like their their eyes, eyes are this color, or they're notably left-handed, or this and that happened, or, you know, this is their magic, or this is what they're doing at this you know, point in the story when they're off screen. So, you know, remember that if you make revisions that they can't suddenly be, you know, over here and in this land, they're actually over here doing this, that sort of stuff. And I've been having an issue because I have about 20 character documents at this point, some of them more filled up than others. But um, often when I'm writing, I need to know something on the fly and it's been hard having to stop and, you know, read through the names and, you know, crawl through my uh, Google documents and the the characters that have images, you know, little, little doodles make it make it so much easier to grab, you know, grab the information I need. So the goal is to kind of draw something for all 20 characters or the majority of them. Um, I think I'm going to get bored uh, before I finish all 20. I think there's going to be something, you know, a more important project or something's going to come up before I quite get it done. But, you know, it's good practice and the more I draw of my characters, the better anyways. So... Yeah. So you've seen that I've just drew uh, a couple ideas for the crown. Um, one is the more generic kind of just jagged crown look. And then the second one was bones. 
and I really latched on to that idea. I'd like to explore it further down the line, but since I only really had a page and about an hour to do uh, do some sketches, I decided to just go with the crown look and let it evolve as I, as I did my drawings here. So this crown is called the Crown of the Lich King, and it's important and it's kind of infamous, and in the story, people aren't entirely sure if it exists still. Um, I think I, it's kind of um, hard to say with, uh, with how the lore is right now. There's some things that are changing, but uh, um, in Kalismir, they, they descend from a, another kingdom, a fallen kingdom, kind of in the way you have, uh, you know, the legends of King Arthur kind of come from a different time, but the idea is that, you know, we, we, we descend from that. So it's kind of like that. It's a, a kingdom of myth, and nobody's quite sure what's real or not. Uh, and what caused the fall of Acanthia and the rise of Kalismir um, was basically a, a war between the humans and some other races. And uh, it was a war of secession between uh, two twins. And one of those twins was Pylair, uh, the who would later be known as the Lich King. And he was he, he was the one in this world who invented necromancy and the magic of uh, raising people from the dead you know, uh, possessing people and that sort of stuff he was a magical savant but he used his powers for bad and one of the the one of the items he was most known for was the the crown of the lich king which was the crown of acanthia that he corrupted and turned into this sort of dark object the sort of focus of his his magic um and i figured well you know he's a lich king so what if the crown was literally made of bones? And I really like that idea. I'm sure it's not very original. Um, I didn't really look at references because the idea just sort of hit me at the spur of the moment and I didn't want to take time out of my drawing time to go and look up for ideas. And I also just wanted to see what I could generate on my own. So yeah, uh, I showed these pictures to a friend and she said, well, how creepy would it be if, if the, 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 the fingers of the crown actually moved like if they actually flexed a bit and i was like oh that is so so creepy so you know if 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 this ever proceeds to um to being fully animated i i would love to see that that just adds a, another level of creepiness one concept idea with baldrick is that um when he found the the crown of uh, pylair the lich king's crown and he put it on he um cannot take it off now uh, the, the crown sort of fused with him, and he's sort of half-possessed by Pylair, and Pylair's sort of trying to take over his body by enticing Baldric to uh, freely use um, Pylair's magic, but every time Baldric does that, it costs him, and uh, it costs him his sort of his youth and his life, which is why some of these drawings you see the sort of decay on him and his eye changing color. That's the price he pays for the magic that he uses. And if he doesn't find a way to expel uh, Pylair from him, he's basically at some point going to... Um, there's going to be so little of him left that Pylair's just going to take over his body, and then the world will have to reckon with the return, the full return of the Lich King. Which is... it probably overcomplicates the story a little bit, but I'm not really planning on going back from this now. I, I like the idea of the villain himself... Um, you know, having another force that he's reckoning with, and, you know, the heroes themselves, you know, it starts off with just uh, a story about, you know, kicking out this, this, this bad guy from being king, and turns into this, you know, greater battle of, you know, of life and death, as it were, um, new and old, and that sort of thing, and I really like that. Also, uh, Baldric kind of needed something... Uh, a force against him in the early part of the story because our heroes, it's an adventure story, so our heroes aren't actually in the kingdom of Kalismir at the start. They're actually quite far away and their goal is to return to Kalismir and oust Baldric. So uh, before I really developed this duality of characters, Baldric was basically just sitting in Kalismir and I didn't really know what he was up to or what he was doing and there wasn't really a reason why he couldn't just gather up his his vast army or forces or whatever that he used to take the kingdom and then you know go and just squash our heroes you know they're, they're especially in those early days where they're not very good at what they do but adding um 
adding Pi Lair has uh, sort of added some some explanation to that. It's also given, you know, uh, Baldrick struggling to expel Pi Lair while also trying to gain and use his power because he himself doesn't have all this magic power. Um, he sort of needs Pylair to uh, Pylair's power to maintain his rule, but he's also trying to find ways to get get him out. And you know that's part of why they they need Yazette. She's part of the ritual to to get rid of Pylair, as it were. I'm also kind of a sucker for um, transformation over time, uh, and I really like the idea that as the story progresses, Baldric is going to slowly and slowly look more and more like a lich. And, um, you know, just kind of his desperation and that transition from him to, to Pi Lair. I don't know. It's just a, a really interesting thing to explore as a writer. And quickly, I just want to apologize here for my head being in the way of me drawing this. I, I didn't really realize that that was happening at the time. But uh, there we go. I think I think my head's gone. I think at some point I do realize and I do pull back. But uh, yeah. I was um, trying to get some last sketches done very quickly. I was kind of sort of running out of time, but at this point of me drawing, I was having a lot of fun, just kind of exploring the, the sort of decay um, and, you know, how many tines to the crown, you know, how advanced could Baldrick get, you know, at what point is is it just Pylair um, and stuff, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, these were, these were very fun, very fun drawings. I was kind of hoping to find a... Uh, a sketch amongst these that I could just uh, throw into the computer and ink, but I don't think any of these quite fully worked. Um, one thing I kind of wish is I'd wished I'd had a little bit more, a bit more time to explore um, Baldrick's actual facial features because I've always just defaulted to the sort of big-nosed, gaunt-faced uh, character, which works really well if you know if I'm going to transform him into a into a skeleton. But I think down the line, uh, when I really kind of get around to properly doing some concept art and exploring the potential looks he could have, I think I'll be doing a lot of um, a lot of different kind of faces and stuff. And who knows? I've I've often wondered maybe I could make him you know a, a much more buff fellow, or maybe he maybe he starts off very gaunt, but as the story goes on, even though he's growing weaker, his body's actually you know getting a lot stronger, and that could be interesting too. And you know, just uh, just looking back at this page as I'm recording this audio, I realized. Almost all of these image images I drew of him have him uh, kind of scowling with his teeth teeth bared. And that wasn't really intentional, but uh, I do find a lot of my characters kind of have a default um, expression, and uh, Baldrick's is kind of this sort of scowling, you know, mouth open but teeth bared kind of look. And I, I kind of forgot that that was sort of a, a thing of his until now. And yeah, here again, I'm just kind of exploring this sort of this sort of decay that, that sort of happens. And I think with this little image here, I really push it. Um, I push it as uh, after I get kind of to the crown. So in developing the crown, I was kind of um, on the fly trying to think of the bones that I'd studied back in college. I was kind of specifically thinking of the, the, the finger carpal bones, but uh, I kind of wanted something in between those bone shapes and I was struggling to think of what I could do because I didn't just want these tines coming out of his head. Th that might happen later on when he really truly starts to fuse with the crown. So I was kind of um, thinking, you know, well, what, what's kind of a flat bone that kind of could be used as a spacer? And uh, I'm obviously going to explore some more, some more bone ideas, but I thought of it would be really interesting to use um, the, I, oh, I always forget the name of this bone, the ox, oxe? It's uh, the, the bone that holds both of the wings of the pelvis together at the back, and it's also the bone from which the um, tailbone descends from. And it's a really freaky looking bone. It's kind of this flat warp shape with these sort of six holes in it, and it's, it seemed to fit the bill, so I kind of based, um, based the spacers of the crown off of, off of my remembering what the ox, ox a, though I can't remember its name, what it looked like. And yeah, I'll have to try some other ideas. I think there's um, some potential, like maybe vertebrae could be a very good idea, and vertebrae are kind of fun to draw. Um, and here I'm now just kind of doing some wind down, doing kind of some rough expressions. I think here I'm trying to do something other than closed mouths because I've been doing that a lot with my human characters. 
And I think that's okay because usually I'm just trying to come up with a look. I'm not quite trying to do expressions, but every now and then I get worried that I can't draw something with an open mouth, so <laughs> then I proceed to do so. And this one I think turned out okay. Anyways, guys, uh, we're about to wrap it up here, so I hope you enjoyed these drawings. Please like, comment, and share if you like this, and stay tuned for the next episode where I will be doing a digital portrait of uh, Baldrick here. So yeah, have a, have a good evening, and uh, see you then. <laughs>